Hey everybody, welcome back to CAF's Heroes of Sport. My name is Bob Babbitt, co-founder of Challenged Athletes Foundation. Every week, I get to interview some of the greatest challenged athletes and supporters of our Challenged Athletes Foundation in the world. And this week is no different. I have Dean Roper, who is a co-chairman of our Million Dollar Challenge, 15th anniversary Million Dollar Challenge, and one of our amazing athletes will be riding, dealing with multiple sclerosis, Mr. Rob Evans. Let's start with you, Rob. Talk a little bit about growing growing up. You were with in all sorts of different sports, right? Yes, I um I grew up playing soccer, playing football. Got into swimming and played water polo. Ended up being a swimmer through high school, a little bit of college, and then I went to um, met my wife through. We were both coaching on the same club team. We met, we got married, we are still married. It's been 20 years since August and got into triathlons a little bit Yep. and discovered I don't like running, running hurt too much. So I went cycling and stayed with cycling. Uh, we were, we were in Alabama when we cycled and my wife was like, I want to start riding with you. She had ridden a little bit, but then we got our starter bike. We started together. Then we ended up moving to Austin, Texas. And we were still riding together, doing charity rides for different places. And I was out on a bike ride, 40 mile bike ride. And I come home after it felt fine. And I looked in the mirror and the left side of my face was paralyzed. And my first thought was, what in Texas bug has the power to sting me to paralyze just my face? So I wasn't concerned very much. And I was like, okay, everything else was functioning. So I'm like, I took a shower. I waited for my, my wife was at a swim meet. She got home. I'm like, watch me smile. And she's like, you look a little swollen here. Go take some Benadryl. All right, took Benadryl. Next day, Monday, we're talking, and she's all, you need to call the doctor, because apparently my left eye was not blinking at all. So my right eye is blinking. My left eye is not blinking. I called the doctor, talked to the nurse. The nurse is like, no, you need to go to ER like right now. You should have already been in ER. I'm like, okay. So my wife's thinking mini stroke, Bell's palsy, all that. So we go to the doctor or the hospital. They put an EKG on me, take it off in five minutes, do a CAT scan, see a spot on the CAT scan. They do an MRI. They see brain lesions on my brain. So the, what I remember, the ER doctor comes back in and goes, we think it's MS and turns around and walks out. My wife tells it a little bit differently than that, but that's what I remember. So we sat and waited to get transported because it was a brand new hospital. So they didn't have a neurologist on staff at the time. So we waited, got an ambulance ride to this other hospital. Because I had the MS tag on me, they had all the yellow flags, they had bed alarm, they had everything. So I get off the bed to go use the restroom. Well, nurses come rushing in and go, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to the bathroom. He's like, no, no, you have MS, you can't. I'm like, Ask me to do anything right now, I'll do it. Because I was personal training at the time, and I'm still personal training. But it was like, I'm fine. And so basically, I was in the hospital. It was November of 2011, Monday to the Wednesday, day before Thanksgiving. Basically went through 21 vials of blood they took from me, another MRI, a spinal tap, and basically said, we ruled everything else out. You have MS. And that's where the journey began. Yeah. Um, I'm laying in a hospital bed going, will it kill me? And the neurologist is not in so much words. You know, it's not like cancer where it, it has a death sentence to it. But it could eventually, but that's not what we're concerned about right now. Let's get you going. And basically, I looked at my wife and I had a decision to make then, right then and there and go, you know what? 
Lord, these are the deck of cards that you've passed to me. I have two choices right now, either accept it or try to deny it. And I said, you know what? I'm accepting it. And I have to put one foot in front of the other and go. I, I love that. Or what you have gone through. And I, I like to, I love the fact that when I look at the last couple of years, like 2020, you're the most inspirational rider for, for MS. You rode 4,000 miles in 2020. <laughs> and you're, you're on pace to ride 5,000 miles this year. What you prove and so many of our challenge athletes prove is that, yeah, there's, you, get, you get obstacles in life and how you overcome them. And, and someone who has seen that over and over again is our co-chairman of the Million Dollar Challenge Ride, Mr. Dean Roper. Dean, when you hear that backstory, and this is a guy who you're riding with, right? You, you hear that basically he's told, well, it's not quite a death sentence, but sort of. What's your reaction to that? Well, it, first of all, I, I will say that in the in the 13 years that I've been doing this event and 12 that I've been co-chairing it, one of the things that keeps me coming back are the Rob Evans of the world. But these stories remind me of the tip of the spear and why we're doing what we're doing. Um, I've had the privilege of getting to ride quite a bit with, with Rob this year during training, uh, including some of our longer days. And so we have a lot of time to talk on the bike about his story uh, about the, what, what he's thinking, both from the standpoint of that particular moment, you know, going up Scripps Poway Parkway for the second time in the day, you know, on a 90 mile morning, how are you feeling now? But then, you know, we have conversations about support systems and obstacles and inspiration. Um, and, you know, Rob gives and takes inspiration from other challenge athletes. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were on a 90 mile training ride which called for us to go up and down Scripps Poway Parkway several times in the rain. Uh, you know, that's a five mile climb, give or take. It's steep. We got to the bottom of the first climb and I looked at Rob and I said, well, do you want to go back up again? And we looked at, uh, ahead of us and John Collins, who is a single leg amputee, had made the turn and was going back up for the second time. And so Rob looks at me <laughs> and says, well, now I, now I got to go. Right. So being around these guys, uh, you know, reminds me of the, the strength of the human spirit and the importance of the support system around them, whether it's fellow writers, whether it's wives like uh, Rob's, whether it's friends, um, the, the community that we are building through the Challenge Athletes Foundation and particularly the MDC has a fabric that's very powerful. Uh, and I'm just proud to be a part of that along with Rob. 15 years. 18 million miles covered by the thousand riders over that time, 117 challenged athletes. Uh, ride has raised over $20 million for Challenge Athletes Foundation. Just when you look at those numbers, Dean, and you have been so instrumental in, in driving that, the fact that the five day event, uh, the six day, of, the seven day event, and the three day event sold out months ago uh, is yeah, a testament. A second. Yeah, it's a testament to what you've created. What not you and Scott Rhodes and the and Jeffrey and Christine, yeah. you guys have created is something that people want to be part of the cool club. They want to ride down the <laughs> coast, right? They want to ride with Dean and Scott and Jeffrey and Christine and and, and Rob and, and, and Rob, Rob, right? So talk, just when you look back, the third you've been involved for thirteen years. When you look back and see where it is now, how proud of you are of just of where it was and where it is. Uh, well, thank you for that. A, a couple of thoughts um, that come to mind. So, so we've simply tapped into something that is part of humanity. People want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And not everybody has the opportunity to do that in their normal daily life, their work life, their family life. What we've provided to somebody is a first class experience that allows them to become part of the cool club, but a, a club, a community of people who are doing something for others. And it taps into something in their human spirit that might not otherwise be fostered because they get to be a part of something that is meaningful, powerful, other centered, um, and, and is part of a fabric that, that outlasts that one day, five day, seven day experience. It lasts all year long. It lasts for 15 years. So that's one thought. Um, and the second thought is watching this year where people have kind of emerged from, emerged from their COVID foxhole. Uh, after isolation, after lack of community, after some solitary confinement, 
and you know granted first world you know first world problem right being stuck in southern california in your home but it still deprived people i think of the uh, of, of the part of being that part of that fabric that uh, they long for inherently. I think we're wired for this, right? Like we're wired to be a part of something bigger and we're wired to be involved in sport. So this year in particular, watching people be reminded of what's important to them, what's important to feed their soul. Um, and, I, and not to be too dramatic about it because for some it's still a bike ride, but I would say for the vast majority of people, certainly the repeat offenders who come back year after year, um, it's because they have FOMO. They don't want to miss out on what could be the next, you know, great, uh, great year to talk about and to raise another million and a half. And this year it'll be more than that uh, for Challenge Athletes. So the, the thing that I think really separates is there's a lot of rides that are out there. People show up and they do the ride and they go home. But the yeah. training, the 16 weeks or so of training, the bonding that goes on, and you've seen it, people come there who really have no business thinking about riding 640 miles in seven days. But during that training, their confidence soars, their fitness level mm -hmm. soars, mm -hmm. their inspiration soars because they see the challenge athletes who are, who are attempting this as well. How important do you think that training aspect is? Well, I, I think it solidifies two things. It solidifies the community of riders who are going to attempt you know, a very difficult feat. It builds confidence in people that may not have otherwise had it. Um, and I think of a couple of the stories uh, that are around us. I mean, I think of Myron Juca, um, who, you know, came to us several years ago, new to bicycling, wanted to lose some weight, you know, wasn't sure of himself. Um, he has, you know, done a remarkable job both of fundraising and becoming fit and becoming an athlete who's part of our community. And now his enthusiasm and his wife, Laura's enthusiasm for our cause is, you know, made manifest every day when I open my Facebook feed because, you know, they just can't wait to get started. So the fun thing for me is watching the new energy, um, the, the new human beings that come alongside our mission, where it resonates and connects with them. Uh, that, that outlasts the week. That's something that uh, becomes part of their DNA going forward. Uh, I, the other aspect of it, uh, Bob Sullivan has told me in the past, he goes, every business partner that I have has come from that bike ride. It is a that's business true. trip down the coast. <laughs> and, yeah, and so Sully, Sully is another great example. I've known Sully for probably 35 years, and he came into this event through Scott and I, Scott Rhodes and I. Um, you know, we went on a super long 14 mile ride one day with him for his first bike experience, and I think he probably stopped you know, three or four times. Uh, but it, 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 it bid him, right? And he decided this is something I want to do and want to be a part of. And now, of course, this year, he's our uh, presenting sponsor. He's been extremely generous. Uh, he'll be along for the event for I don't know how many years it is. And it's a part of his soul now as well. So, so Rob, when you get diagnosed with MS in 2011, and they, they really, at that point, they say, yeah, it's not a death sentence, but we're not quite sure exactly what your life is going to be like. What did you do? How, how did you navigate that and figure out what you could do and couldn't do? Um, at first, I didn't think that I had it. I treated it like it was, you have the flu and no big deal. And then as I got older, I was 42 when I was diagnosed. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, okay, I was personal training I was very athletic. I was riding a lot then. I bike to work. I'm a, I commute on bike a lot as well. So I was very active, but I didn't think about it. And then when we moved from Austin to San Diego, that move was very tough for me because I was very successful at the in Austin and now I'm in a new place and I, and I went in a dark hole. I, I, nothing seemed to be going right for me. I was something, you know, I was like, what's going on problems. As far as the MS was concerned, it had, it, there's the thing with the MS is you don't really see a lot of the issues. Um, people look at me and don't first think, Oh, he has MS. It's invisible, now, it's like this invisible it, thing. It's, it's not invisible. like somebody missing a leg or somebody in a wheelchair. Right. So 
people don't understand a lot of the times what I'm experiencing. And, and the best way I can explain it, it's like a, a candle with the flame. My right foot tingles all the time. But there's different variances of it. Like a candle flame, you, you do it and it's nice. But then as I bike ride, my foot gets more intense. So that flame becomes a fire. And then it gets more intense to an inferno. And then I get off the bike. I wait 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And that goes back to a regular candle flame. Um, just recently, I got a AFO for my drop foot that I get experience on the bike, which Dean will probably can explain more of the difference he sees in me with it because he's seen me ride with it a little bit now. And I personally feel stronger with the AFO because I don't have the drop foot right. on the bike. Um, but it's just been, you know, you take one day at a time. That's all I can do. And there's good days and bad days. And you just do the best you can each and every day. Yeah, it's interesting during COVID, obviously, uh, having a pandemic is never a good thing. But sometimes it gives you time to just get out on the bike, right? Because you really can't go yeah. anywhere else. Right. And when I see your mileage, you know, like I said, you, you rode 4,000 miles in 2020 and you're going to ride 5,000 this year. So at the end of the day, do you feel you're fitter now than you've been in this last decade since you were diagnosed? I feel stronger on the bike for sure. Um, I, cause I was putting in the miles, the bike for me, the bike's my equalizer to, to what people can do on land. I get on a bike and now all of a sudden I can compete with a Dean Roper. I can hang with Dean Roper on a long ride and be able to match for the most part what he can do. But as soon as I get off the bike, that match goes away and I'm because of how MS affects because of the left side of the face, my right side, my right foot tingles. So I walk, you know, I'm not as good on land, but on the bike, for me, the MS disappears, except when the foot gets, but I'm stubborn and I, and MS is like a challenge. And I go, you know what, today you're not getting me. Or if you do, I'm going to put you in my back pocket and go, you know, um, that's, that's what I have to do. My challenge, when I go up a mountain, that's my experience with MS. I'm, I'm, it's easy at the beginning. And as you go more, it gets tougher. And that's life in general. But every time I do a mountain, it's like, okay, mountain for me, MS loses one. I mean, I've done Tory 10 times in one ride. And I, and that was just to prove to myself that I could do it. And were the last two pretty? Probably not, but I did it. And that's, that's my battle. That's me putting the MS to shame. What has CAF brought to the table for you? CAF has brought um, a weekly ride to see people, um, support. I got a grant from CAF in 2020 that I was able to get different, more climbing gears on my bike than I had before when I did the 2019 in DC. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's a great support. I love riding with CAF. Um, the friends that I've made is awesome. The fact that I have MS, do, did I wish I wanted MS? No, but the fact that I do have MS, I've gotten to meet great people that I wouldn't have necessarily have gotten to meet possibly with MS. Um, I can't list all the names that, yeah, that's that I met, but everyone that I've met, MS has opened a new door for me. And I get to talk to you guys where probably in the past, I wouldn't be in this conversation. Um, but CAF has brought 
good support, good support for Kristen and I, my wife, um, through like Roy and Pam. They were with me in, on the MS rides too. We've known Roy and Pam for five years and they were an instrument of getting us to CAF. The wives went first and Roy and I came along too. And, but CAF is, is been, how it works. Yep, that's true. CAF has been the weekly ride and just meeting everyone and getting that, that friendship, really. So I, I, it's, it's awesome. So Dean, you know, it's funny, I was just thinking about this. So you've been out there for 13 years. You're, you've seen up close and personal how these grants make a difference because you've seen, you've seen Rob out there with, before he got his AFO. And you know you you see people on a hand cycle or someone like a Lance Weir on a a, a fifty pound vehicle that goes becomes a thirty pound vehicle and somebody on a hand cycle and next year they're riding something faster. Talk a little bit about that. That getting to see sort of what the the, the mission in action, which I think is really what MDC is all about to a certain degree. Yeah, I think our progress can be measured in a whole lot of fashions. Uh, you've touched on a couple. One is just the progress of the technology, um, you know, since I've been involved for the last decade and whatever, um, the, the sophistication of the equipment, you know, you mentioned Lance's rig. So uh, most people know uh, what we're talking about, but if you don't, there's a custom built um, carbon, one of a kind bike built for, it's a recumbent tandem built for one of our athletes who is a quadriplegic. It has a pilot in the front who steers, pedals, and brakes, hopefully. Lance, who's in the back, who's also pedaling with his arms on a crank. And then you have a push bar behind it uh, that allows four, six, God forbid, sometimes eight guys across a road pushing up the hill, up Big Sur, for example. That wasn't possible 15 years ago. It didn't exist 15 years ago. And the level of experience is given to not just Lance, but the people who participate on that team um, is far in advance of what it was a number of years ago. I've watched, I've had the blessing of watching some of our challenge athletes as you have Bob grow up. So, you know, <laughs> Haven Shepard came to stay at our home when she was six years old and now she's in the Paralympics as an 18 year old in Tokyo. Yeah. Uh, some of these athletes that have grown up in our midst uh, saw what was possible as a young kid because of the Sarah Reinertstens and the, uh, Rudy Garcia Tolson's and those uh, athletes that gave them vision. And now all of a sudden they're experiencing just what's possible. I believe the, the next gen, because the paradigm has shifted and there's a new normal out there for what is possible and what is expected of an athlete with different uh, abilities, uh, launches some of these kids into the next generation and who knows what we'll see. Exactly. Uh, it, it's just, it, and, it, and it's a privilege to have gotten to witness it for this many years, and I can't wait to see what's next. Love it. Hey, thank you both for taking time, Rob. Uh, good luck on your three-day ride. I know thank it's going to be awesome. And Dean, you've got 640 miles, seven days coming up, what, the 15th? You guys will kick up on that Friday night and then Saturday yes, sir. ride and finish up on the 22nd at beautiful Mission Bay. Thank you both for taking time, joining us on Heroes of Sport always a treat to talk to both of you guys and thanks everybody for tuning in we'll catch you next time privilege thank you thank Bye. you guys